For this demonstration, we've already deployed a multi-tiered CRM application into the NSX data center running NSXT. Each of the VMs communicate with each other on specific IP ports running over two VMware ESXi hosts and are secured and micro-segmented. VStream NSX Edition and Energenius One have also been deployed using VMware Service Deployment Orchestration and Security Policies to provide packet visibility, allowing smart data to do its work to show you the power of Ingenious One. Let's walk you through a couple of bits of the NSX configuration, and then we'll move swiftly onto the Ingenious One troubleshooting. Using the flexibility and control provided by NSX Manager, the network has been micro-segmented with web, app, and database tiers, as well as shared services such as DNS, Active Directory, and NFS file systems. We've also secured this environment using best practice zero trust model leveraging security policies in the distributed NSX firewall. You see the policies from the client level at the top, then allowing the web traffic, application, and database tiers to communicate, and finally the door is shut for any other traffic with the any any drop at the end. Now we've also grouped or tagged the VMs that we want visibility of, and this instructs NSXT, the service chain, to send a copy of the packets going to and from those VMs to vStream. You see here we've tagged the shared services, database, and app servers, so vStream will see all the traffic within our application, calculate the smart data in real time, and then send the results to Ingenious One. So let's take a look and see Ingenious One in action and troubleshoot some issues going on in this environment. First off, this is the Ingenious One dashboard. It presents high-level smart data calculated from the packets flowing between the VMs in this environment of everything that Ingenious One is currently monitoring. I know we'll be concentrating on NSXT for the demo, but I wanted to show that we can manage multiple domains all in a single pane of glass. We're showing each domain in the same way, with the same metrics no matter which cloud, because we're using the packets as our source of truth to calculate the smart data. We see here NSXT ESXi hosts, VMware Cloud in AWS, then AWS EC2, as well as a colo. So that's a multi-cloud perspective. We see every service edge as well as into the server edge, in our case, NSXT for advanced troubleshooting. So when we're troubleshooting applications which may span multiple clouds, we have an app view as well. Here's our CRM application. Remember, this is in NSXT, so micro-segmented and secure, but we still have full smart data visibility. This view reveals the performance of all the layers of the application, the front end, stock, offers, Oracle, in EC2 in this case, MySQL, NFS, Active Directory, and DNS layers. We can, of course, change the high-level metrics, and we have many to choose from, including showing transaction failures, application response, network response, retransmissions, all to assist in pinpointing root cause. In this case, we've targeted the high-level metrics at response time slow. This gives us a perspective of the worst performing layers. After all, if our users are experiencing problems such as application is slow today, then seeing which layer is the slow will help identify root cause. We see Stock Manager with 12% slow transactions and Oracle in EC2 11% slow transactions. Let's concentrate on the Stock Manager layer and drill in and find out what's going on. The service monitor displays the performance of the VMs in the stock application layer in detail based on smart data. This reveals two discovered stock servers, stock M1 and stock M2. It presents metrics such as number of transactions, successes and failures, fast or slow, and average response time for each of the VMs. First, let's focus on total transactions. Stock 1, far fewer transactions than stock 2. So stock 1 is not pulling its weight. But look at latency. Average response time, stock 1, 133 milliseconds, compared with stock 2, 25 milliseconds. This is pretty significant. We now know that stock 1 is much slower and cannot cope with the high volume of traffic and probably is causing those users to complain about their application performance. Remember, this user experience information or smart data is calculated from the packets flowing between the various application layers, in this case, transactions to and from the stock application layer, and for stock one, it's real slow. Now, as part of the VMware integration, we can see what host and how these servers have been configured in terms of CPU and memory. The slow stock one server has one vCPU, one gigabyte of memory, and is sitting on host ESXi24. The working stock two server with four vCPUs, eight gig of memory, and sitting on host 25. By combining the performance information from Ingenious One Smart Data with the infrastructure information from vCenter, we can now start to escalate and fix things. 
perhaps top up the memory and vCPU of stock one, or maybe vMotion the server if the resources on its host were saturated. The Netscout Smart Data has provided evidence of the slow application server. This is information you cannot get from infrastructure information alone, nor other network-based information such as NetFlow. We're going to fix the application issue memory and vCPU for stock one, but let's view this over time so we can see the before and after. This reveals the performance for the two stock servers individually. The first row is the slow stock one server, see transactions, response time distribution, average response time and error code distribution. We'll fix those application errors in a minute, but first concentrating on the average response time. See the green lines for stock one over 100 milliseconds up to 200 milliseconds, well over the customer threshold of 40. For the healthy stock M2 server, well under the threshold, 20 to 30 milliseconds. Let's go to vCenter to make the changes to fix stock one, and then we'll return to this screen to see how we've done. Here's vCenter's view for stock one, saturated CPU and memory. So maybe our first line of attack will be to give them a boost. Let's do this and see what happens with the performance of the application. We'll power off the stock one VM, change the settings, four vCPUs, eight gig of memory, and then power it back on. After a few minutes, vCenter displays better stats coming from the CPU and memory utilization from the stock one server. Let's take a look at the application performance in Ingenious One to see if the service performance has been improved. And there we have it. The performance for stock one back to normality, now fast and well under the application latency threshold. Take a look at the number of transactions it is now able to process, a vast improvement from before. In this case, smart data, leveraging the packet data, has been able to identify the specific VM causing the slow service responsiveness to the users and provide the evidence to get the problem escalated to the infrastructure team to fix it. And finally, the visibility after to make sure the problem is fixed and with ongoing monitoring helps you assure the performance of the service end to end. That's performance slowness sorted. But we've also tracked something else here, application errors. See the error code distribution? For stock one, 501 not implemented, and for stock two, 404 not found. Let's dig into the 501s and see if we can get those cleaned up too. Here's the web services monitor as before, but this time we'll focus on the stock one app server, 501 error, and we'll drill down to sessions view. Session overview shows all the transactions, and if we focus on one, the offending URL on the app one server, we see the domain, path, and the API call. We see the ladder diagram, and then looking at the summary, we see more application detail. The URL, host, it's a get, and finally confirming the 501 not implemented error. I can even go down to packets if I want, giving precise details to analyze or just save and then send them to dev. But in reality, I don't need to view the packet detail for this problem, as the session view information gives me enough to escalate. Back to the dashboard. I can now do the same thing for the 404 errors for the stock 2 server and get the URL from the sessions view. So let's escalate to dev and get them to fix the apps and see what happens in the dashboard as the service recovers. Fast forward to after the fix, errors gone and performance back to normal. We're back in business thanks to the advanced troubleshooting capabilities of Smart Data and Ingenious One. And I can do this for all the layers of the app. Here's an extended dashboard showing Stock Manager with the now recovered performance, the application response time down to acceptable levels, and the errors now gone. Moving down the layers, we have Oracle, MySQL, DNS, Active Directory, but the list can go on. Taking a closer look at the performance of Oracle sitting in EC2, we see moderate average application response time 50 to 100 milliseconds. But long network time, 150 client, 250 server connect time. That shows that the network is at the cause of the delay and therefore overall performance is suffering. So that's another one to be sorted, but this time it's the network. Maybe a need to connect over AWS Direct Connect from NSX in the data center to AWS rather than the VPN route we currently have. Or better still, migrate it to VMC Cloud in AWS to provide the agility, performance and manageability that's required.
So we've identified a network problem and escalated that. Let's take a look at these database errors and provide some evidence for dev. Oracle select 942 table does not exist and Oracle 1017 errors. I can drill down to this in exactly the same way as before, this time to the database monitor presenting the smart data. We can highlight the errors, table does not exist and login password failures. Drill down into sessions to see transactions and flow for the table does not exist. Then into packets. We can even see the select statement in this case and the resulting error. This table, table does not exist. The needed evidence for dev to fix the issue just like we did before. I can keep on doing this advanced troubleshooting, cleaning up performance, cleaning up application errors, no matter where or what the application is. Remember also, smart data is agentless. We're gathering the packets, in this case through the vStream NSXT integration because the web server accessing the database is in NSX. In summary, Ingenious One with Smart Data provides a consistent workflow for troubleshooting applications, from simple dashboards to service monitors, sessions, and maybe packets. Top-down workflow where you don't have to sift through gigabytes of packet traces. Let Ingenious One and Smart Data do the work, present the key performance application metrics, and use those to drill down. Better still, use Ingenious One to generate notifications of the issues automatically. From the first dashboard, there were notification alerts for Active Directory, Stock, and Oracle. Drilling down to the Ingenious One Notification Center reveals the problems, allowing you to collect the evidence to escalate appropriately. Here's the alerts. These are threshold, but of course, we can do baseline alerts as well as root cause analysis. For Stock Manager, we see the response time issues. Remember Stock 2? Also the application failures. For Oracle, we also see the failures and the response time issues we've just gone through. Notification Center can be the starting point for service triage as well. We can go directly from the alert into the service monitors and continue the advanced troubleshooting journey with Ingenious One.